So after this first example, I would like to introduce you to the second example. In the first example, we reconstructed the parent phase in the Martin Citic steel. And in this example, we're going to do the exact same thing. Just this time, we're going to reconstruct an alpha titanium um, microstructure to the parent beta phase. This kind of example actually follows the, um, yeah, this is example two here, and it follows the official MTEC example, um, which you can find right here on how to reconstruct the alpha phase, uh, the, the beta phase from alpha. So we're going to go through similar steps, but we're going to use some of the OR tools functionalities um, in this example. So we're having our MATLAB open. Um, we are in the folder of the toolbox. We open this um, example two file, and then we're going to start running uh, the script section by section. If this is the first time you run one of these scripts, I'd really encourage you to watch the example one, where I'm going to go a little bit more into the details of, um, of all the functions and everything that's reoccurring now, I'm just going to skip through a little faster. So we're running the first section, which just basically initializes everything. Then we starting are starting up MTAG, set some of the um, some of the folder structure here, and then we load the data, which again is a MTAG data set, alpha, beta, titanium. Um, so after that is done, we calculate uh, the grains. We use a threshold of 1.5 degrees in this case. Um, nothing crazy here. And then in the next step we are going to rename and recolor the faces. So here again, you can put any faces into this kind of cell array that you would like to consider, and then you can assign these cell names to your faces. So let's do that. Um, so Thai beta, like you see, it's very cryptic. We want it to have a nice name. We call it beta, then Thai alpha. We're just going to call it alpha. And then you can choose your favorite colors. I'm just going to use green for the beta phase and dark red for the alpha phase. So in the next section, we are actually going to um, initialize the parent grain reconstructor by telling it basically these are the grains, this is the BSD data, and we tell it what's the parent phase and what's the child phase. Obviously, the parent phase we want to reconstruct, it's beta. The child phase that we have, that's alpha. Um, and now basically ask me, okay, how do you want to um, define the orientation relationship? We could go here and push define. And in this define um, part, you actually will get a graphical user interface where you can put in parallel planes and directions to define the orientation relationship. But alternatively, when we have parent and child grain boundaries, so if not the entire sample is Martin Citic, we can also use this uh, peak fitting um, functionality. So we can use the left and right um, keys on our keyboard to set um, a threshold value in this kind of um, plot. And you can see what we're plotting is actually the parent child boundary misorientation distribution. We can see that we have a quite high peak here of uh, the same parent child boundary misorientation, which means we have a certain orientation relationship here. And there seems to be another one that's a little bit smaller at around 38 degrees, which is something we're going to look at in one of the next examples. Right now, we set the threshold high enough that we only actually choose this peak to be computed. Um, so when we push Enter, this peak is being identified, and we then use the maximum function value here as the center of the orientation relationship. So now we have to actually compute this orientation relationship. And after that, we're going to actually receive some information on this uh, orientation relationship. And that usually takes a little bit of a while because we have to find the, the parallel planes and directions and actually look at what's the misfit between the orientation relationship that we find, um, like the ideal one with the one that... <laughs> the, the ideal rational orientation relationship with the experimental one that we actually find. So now we've actually uh, gotten the values here. So it returned one orientation relationship in this area. And we got the short summary, basically, that it's 101 parallel to 001 in planes uh, and uh, 1, 1, minus 1 parallel to 1, minus 2, 1, 0 in directions. We can see we're very close to this um, actual rational orientation relationship. And we find 12 variants, which is yeah typical for the case of hexagonal titanium to beta phase. 
So now we actually have basically defined what's the parent phase, what's the child phase, what's the orientation relationship. So now we can actually do some first plots. So again, I'm going to start just in the first example to plot the phase map. Um, And the face map in this case is not really going to be that spectacular since we are only having, um, almost only having one face. So here, here the face map uh, has been plotted. We have alpha face and red, and there's actually very few small green dots in here. I'm not sure if you can, uh, can actually see them. But yeah, there's very little retained beta phase in here. And it's remarkable that we did this uh, orientation relationship determination only based on the beta alpha grain boundaries. So there's actually very little statistics in this data set for, for this kind of yeah, OR determination, but we could still get a pretty good orientation relationship as we were as we are about to see. So here I plot the uh, inverse pole figure map and it usually spits out both the one of the parent and the child face, but here I gave uh, the command child to only plot the child face because the other one almost contains no data. So just by bare eye, we can already see a little bit the outlines of the uh, prior beta grain, but of course we would like to reconstruct this so we can work with it and also know the orientation. Um, so let's have a look at the... Um, the, the boundary misorientation of the child boundaries. Again, I'm not going to plot the one for the parent-child boundaries because there is almost none. So here we can see that almost all the uh, child boundaries um, either have like around 58 degrees, I would say, or just around five degrees or something. And that again fits quite well with the misorientation we see for the orientation relationship. So it's like 60, around 60 actually, and around 10. Um, everything that's that's deviating from this is probably a beta boundary. We can see some of the outlines already being yeah visible around here. So I think it becomes more interesting when we can um, plot the misfit so it's called plot map GB misfit, and what it does is it, it kind of shows us the misfit between the orientation relationship and the grain boundary misorientation in a plot. So this is also called the disorientation. And we're going to limit this to a threshold of 10 degree uh, in order to actually highlight the prior beta boundaries, as you can see. So with 10 degrees, you can see that all the prior beta boundaries are the non-blue boundaries, apart from some, yeah, maybe noise or like... Um, an abnormal kind of grains inside the microstructure. As in our previous example, we can also um, plot the grain boundary probability map. And that basically shows us the probability that a boundary belongs to the orientation relationship, which can be exactly defined within the like as with extra parameters um, to this function if you yeah, want a different definition of it. I've shown this in example one. So we can see that um, all the the grains inside of these yeah, apparent beta grains are quite bright, so they have a very high likelihood of uh, belonging to the orientation relationship, whereas the prior beta boundaries, as they appear, have a quite low likelihood. Um, yeah, we can do the same thing now um, in inverse pole figures. Um, so we can plot an inverse pole figure here, this is the first one. I'm just going to wait because there's going to be three of them popping up. So let's take them one by one. So this here is actually the rotation axis of the parent to child uh, boundaries. So this here is the theoretical, um, let's say, rotation axis of the orientation relationship. Um, and it's written in the in the basis of the parent phase. So we have 0, 1, 0 um, down here. Um, and the color coding, so what we see at all these dots are basically experimental misorientation axis of the boundaries. And the color coding um, actually shows the disorientation of those experimental misorientations with the orientation relationship. So if we have a lot of points that actually coincide with this theoretical axis and there are dark blue, that means those here are quite definitely um, orientation relationship points. So points that actually obey this orientation relationship very well. We can see that there's other points here that do, don't do this as well. Please recall that we only have a very low fraction of um, parent to child boundaries in this microstructure.
So the next figure actually shows the same thing. We can see it's actually similar. It just basically shows the same thing in the basis of the child face. So here we have the hexagonal um, crystal axis of one, two, one, zero type. Um, and then the last plot, we actually look at the child to child boundaries. So that's the majority in this uh, data set, of course. And you can see that we have uh, six different, uh, actually seven different rotation axes um, and that those um, the points are actually scattered nicely around those orientation axes. It's just here in the center that we have some orientations that don't seem to obey the orientation relationship. And interesting enough, also some that seem to obey the right misorientation axis, but seem to have a, still a disorientation, a quite high disorientation um, from the orientation relationship. So this is basically the same as we just had in maps expressed as inverse pole figures, which can be quite handy sometimes to look at. So now we get to the actual um, reconstruction, and this is basically code that is borrowed from the MTech homepage. Um, we are going to calculate triple point votes. So we're looking at triple points between the child grains, and we're going to um, actually look at the two best fits that we can um, get returned. And then from those fits, um, we we decide okay which would be the best parent orientation um, to use for for this combination of uh, grains. And this way, we can actually quite fastly um, reconstruct the entire microstructure. Um, just to have a look, this microstructure. Yeah, this microstructure is like three hundred eighty times five hundred points. Just for your. Um, for your reference, then we can start the reconstruction. You can see it's pretty fast. Um, and then we're going to plot the parent grains with their mean orientation. So here we're getting the parent grains, and we can see, yeah, it's pretty convincing. Like most of these grains uh, fit quite well to. To what we were expecting from looking at the at the child grains, but we can still get better at this because now we already have a lot of parent phase. We can actually now use again, as in the first example, um, the voting algorithm to um, vote for um, basically possible parent orientations of grains that have not been reconstructed yet based on the surrounding parents. Um, and if we do this, we get still a better improvement. Um, in the reconstruction. So here we go. Um, I'm just sorry, I actually run the <laughs> wrong block. Nothing really happened. We have to run this one here. Um, Yeah, here you go. So like most of it looks pretty fine. We have almost no um, areas that have no solution left. Remember, this was a weird artifact here. And yeah, this area, it's just ambiguous. So um, I would not be too confident about this part. But yeah, I think we, in all in all, we can be very happy with this reconstruction. What we can do now is we can clean the reconstructed grain so we can again merge similar orientations since we still have a very granulated grain distribution and we can merge some of small inclusion some of the small inclusions into the into the parent grains um, to clean this entire microstructure up a little bit. What we then get is uh, this reconstructed microstructure, which I think is quite nice. Um, so as the next point, we're gonna do some variant analysis. So we're first going to um, plot the theoretical variants. And of these, we can actually see around six here, but there's actually 12 of them. And yeah, they're actually overlapping or are actually exactly opposite of each other. Um, we will see this a little bit better if we, when we now calculate the uh, theoretical variants. Um, actually, now we're going to see this at a later point. Um, I'll get back to this. So now we calculate the variant and we are now plotting a map um, in which we want to color all the alpha grains um, based on their variant identity. Yeah, this is this plot here. Um, and on top of that, we can also um, plot the packets. And here we uh, get the packet identities. Um, so in the next step, we're going to reconstruct the parent um, EBSD microstructure. 
with this job calc parent ebsd which is an mtag function and yeah we now plotted the the prior beta grain boundaries in quite thick black and inside we have the ebsd data this one could now be exported for example and then we could uh, use it for any other analysis um, so as a last part, I'm going to show this grain click feature again, which I already um, introduced in the first example. Uh, beware that all your figures are going to close when you run this one, because yeah, otherwise we would run a little bit out of figure space here. Um, what you can now do is you can go around and click on one of these uh, prior beta grains, and then you can get tons of information about that particular grain. So now just click that this grain. You can see it has been identified here in the command window. Um, yeah, and now basically plots are being generated. So now those plots, uh, the plots have been generated. I'm just very briefly going to show them to you again. Um, so this here is the parent phase plot. This is the child phase plot where we can see all the child grains. And this one here is the parent grain inverse pole figure. Then we have the child grains, so the alpha inverse pole figure. Um, so now for this grain, we can also generate a variant map where we see all the variants. We can generate the packet map where we see all the packets. Then here we actually see the um, the average versus the um, versus the actual um, parent grain orientation. We can see that there's some some um, yeah wrongly indexed points as well, but most of them actually agree very well to to the mean orientation. Then these are actually the theoretical um, yeah child variants that we can form. Again, there's twelve of them, but we can't really see them because they overlap. But now when we um, actually compare this to the actual variants, we can see that um, yeah, that two variants basically overlap in this projection of the pole figure, and that we have quite a good correspondence between um, yeah, the alpha grains here and their theoretical positions. The same thing can be done for um, the packets. Then we have the inverse pole figure um, for the with the variant coding and the inverse pole figure with the packet coding again. And then last but not least, we have variant ID histogram where we actually look at the area fraction um, of each variant. And we can see we have a quite even distribution. Um, same goes for packet uh, IDs. We can also see how the packets are distributed on our map. So in this figure one now, we can just click at another grain and continue this kind of analysis. Um, so this will close all the previous figures and then start pl plotting new figures. And when you're done with everything, you can just do a right click to um, leave, leave this kind of function. So this has been it. I hope you found this very informative. So you can see just as easy as we can reconstruct the steel microstructures. We can do the same thing for um, alpha beta titanium alloys. Yeah, in fact, um, this kind of syntax is not really limited to any crystal structures. So as long as you put in the right information about your crystal structures, you can do any kind of martensitic system. Um, like here, we of course now use the um, alpha, beta, titanium uh, dataset in mtag, but you could of course use the import wizard here to load in your own dataset and use this script to um, analyze your own microstructure. There's absolutely no problem with that. Yeah, that would be everything for now, and I hope to see you in the next video.